All right, guys, welcome back. Another video. We'll keep building. Um, might even cue the monkey in this video. We'll see how we go. But uh, it's progressing well. I hope you enjoy the video. All right, so I've laid out, I've marked out my measurement. I've measured from the bell crank to the control horn of the elevator. I've doubled it, added a foot. Does that make sense? I've done one cable down here. So it's one continual cable with a splice or a crimp. It's gonna be my down cable. And then just about to cut, or I've just cut the up cable on my bench here. 110 inches I worked out. And we'll crimp that up, fit some turnbuckles, rig it up, and we should be able to make some aeroplane noises. All right, crimp crimping up my sleeve. For a 330 second cable, the book actually says just one crimp, but I've done two. On the others, I did three. When I say the others on the cross bracing, which was 330 second cable, I did three crimps. It got a bit busy. So for the elevator and the fact it's doubled over, um, I've gone with two. Looks quite nice. 330 second cable. And the go no go gauge for 330 second slips on. Slips on there quite nicely. On the bell crank itself, um, just got a bolt running through there. It slips in. I've ordered some bushes, some quarter inch 316 OD, um, ID, sorry. So for the AN3 bolt, and it'll just give the cable something to wear on, I guess. Um, and I can do this bolt up tight. Yeah, it's too long, I know. Um, it'll do for purposes of the, the trial fit. So with these turnbuckles, I just um, set them up as the threads just show. You're allowed three threads out, four turns in. So I set them up as max, because you're only, initially you're only ever gonna start to tighten them up. So, half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three. Then I put a bit of, let's put some masking tape on just to stop them spinning while I muck around. And the trick with the masking tape is give yourself a fold it over, make it easy to get off. Otherwise you spend 20 minutes trying to get the tape back off next week. That locks up the ends. And the clevis pin goes in with the turnbuckle. Just notice, I probably need a tiny bit off the control horn just to free it up. Um, it's not quite floating. This bottom one under here. Clevis pin, that's better. Yeah, full, full movement. Nothing's gonna bind. So I'll give this top one a bit of a a little bit of a sand. Right, I've run the, um, run the cables initially. Now I'm just thinking about some fair leads. So I'm thinking of doing that, put a tube through the Teflon. If the tube wears out, it's not a big thing. It's still gonna hit the Teflon. And these little dummies, pacifiers, uh, diaphragms, they will sort of go I'll put this before I crimp the end, I'll put this on the cable, slide them on, then worry about either Adele clamps or you know, one Adele clamp, it can slip down over time. Uh, in here, for argument's sake, two Adele clamps over this tapered one, nothing can move. That's what I'm thinking. Not sure about this one. Yeah, it might just be a case of Adele clamp and then a lock wire up to the top. Just thinking out loud, that might work, just to stop it dropping down. Not much inverted flight going on. Um, one over here, one down there. Just where they come close, like here. Don't want that rubbing. So I'll just put a fair lead in there. We'll see how that turns out. So I'm just straightening out my tubes, a bit bent. 
Right, I'm on a long Allen key, and then I'll hit it with the um, hit it with the heat gun just to straighten them out a bit. Alrighty, boys, we've got an elevator. Now look at this on the stick. All right, cue the monkey. Now I've got the um, my little satin discs in here. Just got to work out now how I'm going to secure those to the uh, to the frame. I don't want to drill holes in my fuselage, um, and it's a funny angle. It's angled back and leaning, so it's not just straight off these. I was thinking of Dell clamps, but yeah, just happy at the moment that that's um, going really well. All right, beautiful day, just been out for a fly. Took the cruiser out, gave her a polish, got the dust off, got some uh, sop with camel uh, droppings all over her. So she's happy. Did a few, a few simulated sop with camel landings with the nose wheel. All right, where are we at? The lighting's probably bad, but it's a beautiful day here in Latrobe Valley. So, bolted them on. I use these hose clamps I found. I was looking for Adele clamps, but they're like hose, metal hose clamps. Works really well because you can, you, there's a couple of angles going on here. They're tapered in towards, in towards the center of the fuselage. When I say they, I mean the, um, my chopping board here, which is the, the Teflon stuff. It literally is a chopping board I cut up. Um, so they're tapered that way. They're also leaning downhill. So, I mucked around for a while with spaces, then I found I just um, had some leftover Dubro, those familiar with RC models, Dubro 3mm nuts and bolts. Um, well, sorry, the bolt, was, the bolt was already through the clamp. It does up around the, the upright, and the little nut just holds my aluminium um, piece on there, a couple of rivets, and uh, that's really nice can't really go anywhere this will get adhered anyway with um this will get wrapped in tape and then glued with covering so that'll sort of hold it anyway um i just don't want it to you know bind up my elevator um little cheat slot in there got it on nicely looking good four to go all right last one so you can see how i'm doing this hopefully um, without damaging the cable um, the good thing is those two holes can't be wrong because you just adjust the um, these hose clamps. So in this situation, got the hose clamps. I've cut the cut this rough cut slides on the cable. Um, goes onto my clamps. I've got this one twisted around because it's so close to this uh, the cross member. That'll slide in. I like it to sit, you know, that's just sitting where it wants to sit. So I'm not pulling it left, right, up or down too far. Not that it matters too much. That's the wind blowing. Now, I'll carefully mark these, drill these. It's telling me that the clamps, both clamps just need to twist slightly. That's fine. Or I can just bend the bracket. Um, and just gotta be pay particular attention not to nick the cable. One broken strand would render this US, um, and I will rivet that from the other side. Heads on the heads on the thin side, tails on the thick side, and that's the last one. I might put a dollar per silicon on there because spare the silicon, spoil the job. And I've got the ones down the back completed as well. Looking good, happy with those. All right, guys, the prop from Culver, Culver Props, has arrived. It's in a cardboard box, which I'm worried about. Should be okay, hopefully. I'm a bit nervous to open it. Um, I've cut the tape that I thought I'd show you guys as I open it. It's been opened by Customs. Um, it's come from Alana at Culver Props in uh, Missouri, I think she's in. MO, wherever MO is. Now, it's only wrapped in newspaper. 
Very expensive prop for me, all hand carved. That's wood. It would ding easy. I'm gonna finish the job I'm doing. We'll clean up, put a blanket down. I'll pull the prop out, stand by. All right, one propeller. Oh boy, please don't be damaged. Just change the mic around to the front so you should, should be able to hear me. Um, crack the newspaper. Might be a good read. Chicken breast, two ninety eight a pound. Okay. A bit of a rub mark. Yeah, I know you're still there, guys. Just uh, getting excited. Wow. Trailing edge is good. Not as glossy as I thought. All drilled out nicely. Colours look fantastic. 80 by 47. I'll give you a closer look. Fantastic. Beautiful barber's pole. The only thing I would say, if the colours were, so if this was a dark, light dark light etc but anyway that's wood you only you get what you get i guess how yeah, cool is that so if you're going to do this guys um especially in australia just be aware the gst man the import man the FedEx guy, the local delivery truck, all want a piece of the pie. So it's a costly exercise. But I'm really happy with that. I'm glad it made the journey. Thank you, Alana, at Culver Props. It's got the nice sticker on there. Both sides. I guess that's under the lacquer. Um, she did say it warped at one stage. But... Um, I think Americans idea of warping is a blemish in the in the finish. But how cool. How cool is that gonna look? 80 inches. Beautiful. Right. Blowing a gale outside, let's make a turtle deck. So I'm just going to measure this up. We'll cut something out of um, cardboard first. Now the, the sheet that I got provided to go on there was going to be aluminium to start with. I'm going with plywood now. So we'll see how that turns out. We'll make a cardboard template. The way I'm going to do that.
that's our wet. Bit of craft time, make up some paper, whatever you got to do. And that's where we're going with this. Now I just mark where I want to cut the edges. This will be my template for the plywood. I guess uh, do we need an overhang? We need something to sew the, the combing to. Might go with an inch maybe. An inch of overhang. Hmm. Anyway, that's my template. We'll work on that. We'll mark it all out, cut it out. Um, see how we go. So I've lashed out. People often ask the cost of stuff. Pencil sharpener, 99 cents. So let's not overthink this. I've got some tape, half inch or something like that. That gives me the distance. My scallops are gonna be this roll of masking tape. That's my diameter, which will give me a nice landing. I'll just work out where they're gonna come back to. We'll cut it out and see how it looks. So just working on the seat, the base. There's some rough guides in here, but no real diamond, um, radius, etc. So I got out my wheels, sort of made the flat, the big radius at the back, tightened it up, and then it straightened up. That's 19 inches wide, 11 inches deep. I sat on it, my big butt fits in there. And then the seat back, I used a 12 inch radius up the top, good old masking tape again, down the bottom, Red just joined them up, folded it over, cut it out. Now, that's, we're gonna see what we get. We'll tape this together and see if it looks something like a seat. All right, we're in the middle of a big storm, but anyway, got my templates cut, seat back, turtleneck, seat base, I do that out of plywood. And I build a um, cardboard seat off my templates, fitted it all up, sat in the um, aircraft, worked out where my, my seat belts will go in the side. Um, that'll bolt on, I need to make sure it doesn't go past the bulkhead there. Sat in there, there's sort of reasons for everything. A uh, little modification, I What did I do? I scallop this out, just a bit of elbow room or my wrists, just on my wrist here seemed to sort of catch on the edge when I when I sat in it for my arm to sort of sit in there. Um, but yeah, out of cardboard to start with. Now I'm contemplating whether the back will be plywood. I got some sheets of alloy down there. Or probably out of plywood. Plywood's a bit easier to form I've got to bend it around this this radius here. Uh, yeah, that's form ply. Uh, how thick is that? 17 mil. It's just what I had. So a good base gives me good surface area on the side to glue and screw once it's cut out. And yeah, this template. I just need to work on when this is on. And the centre line's lined up. These will obviously be cut down to the size of the longer on, on com when it's complete. Just gives me a little bit of leeway at this stage. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to do areas like in here because it just sits, I want to sit flush. Uh, maybe I'll just leave it hang there and let the covering do its job or an Adele clamp, but then you've got a screw poking out. Um, so this will all get covered. I think we've said this, I've said this a few times. I'll glue the ply on, it'll get covered, and then I'll put a fascia of plywood over the covering. Nice stained piece of whatever. That can be like as thin as 30 seconds if I want to spend the money. Um, so I may run a, a bit of wood, a bit of square stock, along there just 
to give me something to glue to hold this in place. I do need to, uh, I, I've just got a, if you can see the crease there, I think I just need to take this bottom edge off the longer on to allow the ply to curve around nicely. And I'm going to use Windex, which has got ammonia in it, and that should curve the plywood over a few days. You know, I'll spray it, crank it down, let it dry, spray it again, crank it down a bit more. Hopefully we'll get the plywood to that sort of shape. I'm not too sure about how much overhang I need. So I'll probably do too much um, in the first instance because I want to put my edging on there. I'll show you what I mean by edging. So I've got this plumber's um, you know, gas pipe fitting stuff that'll go around like the, cock the cockpit combing. That'll sit on there and go around the cockpit and then get nice, nicely laced on with leather and all that sort of pretty stuff. But in order to do that, I think I need that proud of that bulkhead for the shoelace for me to be able to sew it on, if that makes sense. Um, I'm not sure how much room I actually need or do I have it right back and actually sew behind the bulkhead? Not sure. I think I'll just do a nice overhang. Bear in mind also I've sort of got to sit on this bit. So stand by on that one. All right guys, cold day. I think I might call it quits. What do we get done? Get the elevator cables. So they're all in with the fair leads. I painted those black. I put a bit of silicon on the back. I'm not sure if I covered that. So I painted those black just to hide the silicon a bit. Um, looking fantastic. Elevator all works with the cable system. The stick's moving to the pulleys. Not sure what tension. Not a great deal of tension. This is a fair bit of load on there. Um, so the cables are run, fair leads are in, really happy with those. I'm just going to run a razor blade around the, around the edges and when the paint dries, clean those up a little bit more. Look fantastic, I think. Not that, not that you're ever going to see those. Just working out, just that last little radius I'm having trouble with. Um, I'm even thinking about, I could just stop the covering there although it looks like I gave up and didn't try so we'll get it right down I do probably need something in here to glue to but the weather the weather here is atrocious at the moment so I'm gonna try and get home while I can got some test pieces like I do plywood with the Windex I'll bend that up before I go cardboard template for the seat the proper template the seat bottom looking good. Time to go home for the warm. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.